Yo, I'm just so... This is so cool to see other people, like, this is the program I wrote. And he's like... <laughs> it's so cool to see other people actually using it, and, um... It was just a simple visualization. Today, I want to show you a program that I wrote two years ago. Or two or three years ago, I wanted to make, like, my first little game. I even made a video about this thing. It's like this stupid game, which has no point. But I wanted to make the zombies follow the person. So I wanted to have pathfinding. I remember I actually failed trying to implement this algorithm the first time. Anyways, we'll explain how the algorithm works later. I just want to show you what it is. I haven't run this in a few years. This grid, it's actually not really a grid. I just drew squares on the screen in a for loop. If you left click and drag, you can create walls. Oh, this is so sexy. If you right click, you can remove walls. You hold down the S key, you create a start. Wait, no, is that right? Yeah, you create a start and you hold down the E and you create an N. And now if you hit the run, whoo! Dude, I still love it to this day. You can actually like zoom out and zoom in, but it's super broken because it only zooms out and zooms into the left corner. You can uh, drag around these guys. You can change the speed down to a slower speed. Well, actually, let's increase the speed here. Um, if you zoom in far enough, you'll start to see like the numbers on how the algorithm is actually calculating everything, which I find really interesting. Uh, it's gonna take two, here we go. Let's, let's make it, ooh. Right, so there is no path, but you can see the algorithm is is checking you can kind of see like how the algorithm is thinking issues did somebody make issues two hours ago somebody's using it two hours ago Who? what the steps seem to show the pathfinder coming across the end node and ignoring it i got an email <laughs> I'm messaging you because of the A star pathfinding project. It's awesome, but I found a configuration that doesn't find the final path and I don't know why. You know, I got him to send me a screenshot and he goes, please ignore the shape of the walls. Hmm. So we've got an interesting bug report here. It, uh, it didn't find the final path somehow. Hmm. You know what I think might have happened? Stack overflow error. The only way to know for sure is to recreate the, uh, the issue. Okay, YouTube, please do not demonetize me. This is just for education. Nah, it worked for me. Let's try to do this. Oh, stack overflow error. Like if I do this, it's gonna, it's gonna crash, guaranteed. See, it only got that far. So how does this algorithm actually work? This is our start node. This is our end node. We have to calculate two numbers. We have to calculate something called a G cost, and we have to calculate an H cost. And a G cost is just the distance from start node, and our H cost is just the distance from end node. If we're looking at this square, the G, one pixel, we're one square to the right. And now when we look at our H, kind of a messed up graph here, but we're just gonna say that H cost is one, two, three, four, five. So we would mark down five, and then the F is just the sum. So we have a six. So we wanna choose the node with the lowest F cost. This node right here has the lowest one, it has six. So we would choose this node. Now you're wondering, Devin, you just explained how to choose this node, yes. So we just repeat the exact same algorithm I showed you. We would recalculate all of these values for the surrounding nodes around this one. And then we would choose the lowest F cost. And then we would just repeat that process until we would, uh, there is one problem with this that you do have to solve, but that's the basics of it. So at the top left, we get our, our bolded F cost. All of these nodes were on the open list. We sorted it and we chose the lowest value and the lowest value was 420. So if we hit start, we see it's gonna make its way over top. Just think about all those calculations that are happening inside of the computer. And it can solve that in zero millisecond. So how did you code this, Devin? So all I did was I made a for loop that goes from zero to three and another for loop that goes from zero to three. When you have the middle node, we go one, two, three, 
one, two, three, one, two, three. Scan all surrounding nodes and we calculate the X and the Y value of that node. We just calculate the, the G cost and then we calculate the H cost. So you can see then the F cost is just the G cost plus the H cost. Set the new parent node. So the parent is the lowest F cost. So what is lowest F cost function? Sorts, interesting. I could have made this much more efficient. So it returns the lowest F cost node. If the parent equals null, then we're at the end. So there's no path. If the parent, if the node that we just chose is the end, then we're done, right? So, and then there's a bunch of other logic in here, which I didn't, don't worry, I didn't explain this to you, but it basically, it checks all adjacent open nodes and checks if the G score of the parent plus the open node is less than the current G score of the open node. If it's true, it says the parent of the open node is a new parent and recalculates G and F values. But don't worry about that. It's, it's <laughs> then what we do is we call that entire function again, except we call it with our new parent. So yeah, you guys can uh, you guys can play around with my algorithm. You can you can break it. I'm sure it's going to break a million other ways. Uh, you can send me pictures, follow me on the social medias, Twitter and Instagram and stuff. I got some bigger and better projects coming in the future. I'm excited. I'm excited for what's next, man. It's so